Hey guys, it's Jana Cuddles, and um, I know it's been a little while. Um, I don't have an excuse. I'm back though, so get excited for possibly more content. There's this video. Um, maybe there will be more. Who knows? I don't. So anyway, I'm Jana Cuddles from the YouTube channel, and I am here today to talk about Knock at the Cabin, which um, first of all, I just want to say I always want to call it knock at the cabin door. Um, it feels really weird that it's not called knock at the cabin door, but it's just knock at the cabin. Like what part of the cabin is it? Are they knocking on the windows? Are they knocking on the roof? Are they in the basement knocking? Um, spoilers for this entire video because I'm going to be talking about spoilers. I don't have anything else to say other than that. I personally would recommend not watching the movie because it kind of fucking sucks. But, um, you know, you do you, I guess. Um, so Knock at the Cabin is um, based on a book. It is directed by M. Night Shyamalan. You know, if you know anything about M. Night, you know that he had a really good early career and basically everything he has done since signs-ish um, has been hit or miss um, with mostly misses. Um, he is infamous for having done the awful live action adaptation of um, Avatar The Last Airbender. Not a great reputation, but this kind of looked like a comeback movie. It looked really good. It features a queer family. It is too, you know, cis white guys who are gay and in a relationship with one another and you know they they have an adopted daughter who isn't white so you know diversity points there the diversity in this movie specifically this movie feels weird because if you know anything about the movie it is specifically about this queer family who gets intruded upon and their cabin basically gets broken into or does get broken into by a bunch of presumed cultists um, who insist that they have to sacrifice one of themselves and the cultists can't be the ones to hurt them uh, they do go out of their way not to hurt them uh, although this doesn't prove super successful because it is sort of a um, break-in and kidnapping scenario. With that said, um, I knew going into it that it might be a little bit tone deaf. If you know anything about just the state of politics in specifically the United States and the UK um, surrounding queer people, specifically trans people, but all LGBT people are under fire right now. So 2023 is not a great time to be a out queer person. This movie is specifically about a queer family that is attacked. That is the primary scenario of this movie. It's what the entire thing is about, is a queer family being attacked and being told that they have to sacrifice one of themselves and effectively destroy the family un unit um, in order to save humanity, which feels really tone deaf given the circumstances. So um, before I went into the movie, I did have the book ending spoiled for me. Um, I think it was by another YouTuber and um, so I knew going into it that at least the book was kind of tone deaf. Um, apparently the book is written by a cishet white guy, which is interesting. But I thought maybe, given the circumstances, that they would try to change it and make it, you know, more watchable, specifically for queer audiences. And they did change it. The ending is different from the book but it is arguably more tone deaf than the book. So maybe I'm wrong about this, but my understanding of the ending of the book 
is that the girl, their daughter, is killed accidentally and it doesn't count as a sacrifice because it wasn't one of her fathers to do it. I believe the world ends because a sacrifice wasn't made. So the movie changes the ending and allows the daughter to survive. Um, so the daughter does not die in the movie, but what the movie does is it lets you know that the doomsday that these cultists who we presume are crazy people is actually real and is going to happen and can be stopped by their sacrifice. And they are told constantly throughout the movie that it's because their love is so pure. That's why they were chosen because their love for each other is so pure. And that's why you have to give it all up basically. And I think that's inherently tone deaf to make something that says that a queer family must literally destroy itself for the betterment of humanity in 2023. Maybe that's just me. So I did have hope for the movie because it did keep hinting that these people were crazy and possibly motivated by bigotry um, because it's revealed partway through the movie that one of them, so there's four cultists who break in. Um, one of them literally hate crimed the gay couple at one point in the past. It confirms this about two thirds of the way through the movie, but then it kind of just completely sweeps that information under the rug in favor of, oh, actually they were telling the truth the whole time. I mean, we forget about it entirely. It has no consequences to the ending of the movie. And I don't understand why it's there. I think it was maybe meant to be like a red herring or something, but it changes the messaging of the movie. It says, yes, these people were at least partially motivated by hatred and by bigotry, but their intentions were still pure because they were right about the world ending and about them needing to make a sacrifice. So actually it's not bigotry, even though one of them is literally a bigot and has actually hate crimed one of them before. Feels a little tone deaf, right? Like I'm not crazy, am I? I mean, I know I'm a little crazy, but I'm not crazy about this. So yeah, it, it spends, the movie spends a lot of time um, kind of elaborating on how Rupert Grant's character had hate crime them in the past. And there's, they're not a hundred percent sure it was him because it, it happened really fast, but they know the last name of that person um, because, you know, he got sent to jail for it. And they do know that Rupert Grant's character had done jail time, but he goes by a different name with the cultists. Again, spoiler, um, the cultists are killing themselves off one by one in front of the family every time the family says no to sacrificing one of themselves. And Rupert Grint's character is the first one to be sacrificed. It's like maybe 30 minutes into the movie that Rupert Grint dies and his body is just left out on the porch for the rest of the movie. And it's not until about two thirds through the movie that um, one of them is able to check his wallet and find his ID and find out that his last name is the same as the last name of the person who hate crimed him. Therefore confirming that Rupert Grint's character had hate crimed them in the past, but this confirmation is utterly meaningless because the movie never talks about it ever again. And the bigotry is just a non-issue because the cultists were telling the truth the whole time. And we're just meant to believe that it like teases with the idea that maybe their visions about the end of the world were, uh, maybe they were encouraging each other 
in these group online forums that they found each other on. And there's only four of them. Like, we're just supposed to believe these four people who are just complete randos. Like, they're from all over the country. They met on an online messaging board. We're meant to believe that they're just telling the truth, even though one of them actually hate crimed the victims in this movie. Does nothing with that. So my main issue with this movie is that it just really feels like a very elaborate scenario to place a queer family in a hate crime position while still being able to say that it's okay. It's not a hate crime. The apocalypse doesn't see sexuality. Hashtag love is love. Everything is fine because the cultists were right the whole time. Forget about how one of them was a bigot and how we spent so much of the movie talking about that just to not ever talk about it again. It just feels like a really big bombshell to drop and then completely never acknowledge it ever again. Like, I honestly cannot believe that the Shyamalan twist to knock at the cabin was just, lol, what if the crazy death cult people were right the whole time? Like, honestly, shut the fuck up, you tone-deaf cishet man. It's just really frustrating because he did have all of the pieces there to make it actually be a targeted hate crime by Rupert Grint's character and that the other cultists were just fed false memories by him in order to allow him to hate crime this family again. Because it is very clear he is a bigot. And I feel like that would have made the messaging for the movie a lot more relevant and appropriate for 2023 and what is currently happening today. I don't think that we're at a point as a society for us to be unironically destroying queer families for the betterment of society. I just don't. And you know, something really funny is that I was ranting about this on Twitter and someone responded to me and said, it was the only logical conclusion as a writer to have the death, death cultists be right. And I'm like, yeah, sure. If you're a bad writer, being a writer, you are constantly writing yourself into corners all the time. And what makes a good writer different from a bad writer is that they're able to creatively pull themselves out of the corners that they've written themselves into. I feel like the book that the movie is based on is inherently flawed and tone deaf. And in an attempt to make it less tone deaf, Shyamalan actually made it worse because the end of the movie, one of the husbands kills the other one. He shoots him because they both believe it's real very suddenly. They're like, yeah, this guy's a bigot. He hate crimed us in the past, but they're probably right. And it's like, yeah, I mean, planes are falling out of the sky and there's lightning but like, there is no point where I would be okay with literally killing my partner just because some cultists who are all dead now, by the way, because they all killed each other or killed themselves to prove their point. You could not get me to a point to sacrifice my spouse. I don't care if planes are falling out of the sky. Cultists tell me, oh, you have to kill your husband or your wife to save humanity from this apocalypse. It's like, no, I'm not doing that. The apocalypse is happening. I need my partner for that, for one. Also, I'm not literally insane. I'm not going to kill them. That isn't going to help anything. Like, no one ever explains why. And honestly, the movie is so fucking stupid. Do not watch it. It is so tone deaf. It is so poorly written. It's very lazily written. I honestly hate it. So, you know, go see it if you want. I don't care. I think it's a bad movie. I wish there had been 
better representation in a theatrical release for queer people in 2023 other than destroy your family for everybody else's sake. Honestly, fuck that movie. Fuck that message. We need to do better. Let queer people make the queer art and give us funding and we will make it and it will actually be good representation. Like honestly, making all of the representation go through the filter of cishet men is ridiculous. Like we're always going to get bad representation when the people not affected by it are the ones making the stories about us. We need more stuff like Pose out there. I'm trying to think of another example, but I can't really. That's just the abysmal state of queer representation in media right now. And we need to do better. That's my rant about Knock at the Cabin. Uh, bad movie, don't watch it, but do if you want to, I don't care. What I do care about is that you should subscribe and like this video and also comment if you want to. Let me know how wrong I am about Knock at the Cabin or let me know how right I am. I know I'm always right, so don't really need you to tell me, but I appreciate it anyway. So anyway, this has been Jaina Cuddles. I hope you have a great day. Bye.